Okay, it's June 2011, page 14. Uh, questions uh, 77 through 80, dealing with quantum mechanics. A photon with a wavelength of 2.29 times 10 to the negative 7 meters strikes a mercury atom in the ground state. Calculate the energy in joules of this photon. So I'll work including the equation and substitution with units. Well, as I've been trying to do, let's list what we know. First of all, we know we have a photon that has a wavelength of 2.29 times 10 to the negative 7 meters. That's it. That's all we know. Uh, what are we asked to find? Calculate the energy. Energy of a photon. How am I supposed to do that? Oh, here we go. Formula sheet. Let's see. Energy of a photon. Energy of a photon. That looks like modern physics to me. If you had an idea how old this is, and we still call it modern, but hey. Energy of a photon. HF. Wait a minute. Uh, I've got lambda. Oh, wait, look, they do the algebra for me. HC over lambda. So we're going to say the energy of photon is HC over lambda. Do I know C? What's C again? Oh, equals MC squared. That's the speed of light. That's a, that's a biggie. That's on the formula sheet in the front. There it is right there. Speed of light in a vacuum. I don't have to remember that. 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. The H thing right there. E. Let's write this formula down. It's like over here. Energy of a photon is equal to HC over lambda. And H, we're told, is um, Planck's constant. Planck's constant. Real interesting story about that. But Planck's constant is also a lookup. Planck's constant, H. And we're going to be told that 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds. H equals 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds. All right, here's my formula, HC over lambda. So I'm going to write this as uh, 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds. I'm going to multiply that by 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And then I'm going to divide that by uh, wavelength which is going to be 2.29 times 10 to the negative 7 meters. Okay, let's try out the units. Uh, I'll lose a set of meters here. I'll lose a set of seconds here. I'll be left with joules, which is units of energy, so that uh, works. So I bet you my, uh, my algebra is right, too. Now we get the calculator out and punch in numbers. 8.68 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. I don't know what any of these numbers mean, but uh, that's why I depend on my technique. I'm hoping my technique is working. Okay, what's the next question they want to know? Determine the energy in electron volts of this photon, and that's for just a single point. So somehow, I've got a way of converting joules to electron volts. I'm going to look on the front of my formula sheet, and uh, there's an electron volt right here. And we're told it's uh, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. <clears throat> so that's a conversion factor. I can say it's 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 joules is equal to 1 electron volt. Or I can also say 1 electron volt is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. Now I've got joules. I want to be left with electron volts. So I want to have a conversion factor of those electron volts on top. So I'll use this one. I'm going to multiply this by 8.6. I know I use a, a lot of units and I, and I keep everything there, but watch what I'm about to do. I'm going to be able to uh, cancel out my joules. And instead of, some people, do I divide or multiply? Well, this tells me exactly what I have to do. I've got to take 8.6 and divide it by 1.6, and that'll be my answer. So it's going to be straightforward math, but this tells me that I set it up properly. So it's uh, 8.6 divided by 1.6. I'm getting about 5.4. 
And they got the units there, electron volts. That was the question. So there we go. Question 80. Based on your answer to 79, state if this photon can be absorbed by the mercury atom. Explain your answer. All right. Now, they did these steps here because you have a chart of energy levels for mercury. And your chart for mercury energy levels is in electron volts. And so even though you can calculate it in joules, you at some point have to convert it to electron volts. And so uh, very politely, they, uh, they help step you through that conversion process. Uh, if this is a college question, they would just uh, plop you right to number 80 and say you figure out these steps yourself, which is why showing your work and having the process is so important. So let's see, I've got uh, 5.4 EVs. So here's what's happening. You've got this chart here that has the energy levels for mercury. And these are different energy levels. And we've got 5.4 EVs of energy. So if we added uh, 5.4 to 10.38, uh, what state would that leave us at? Well, the difference between these two energy states uh, can be found just by subtracting. So 10.38 minus 5.74. is a 4.64. So in fact, um, if we were to add this much energy to the atom, it would eject an electron upwards, and it would get it at least to this state. Let's see if we can't find exactly. Could it get it this to the next state? Let's see, uh, 10.38 minus 5.52. Minus 5.52. Uh, 4.86, yep, we could get up to here. 10.38 minus 4.95. 5.43, uh, in there. We could get to the uh, uh, B or C state, but we couldn't get all the way to the D state. We would need 5.43 EVs of energy to get there, and we only have 5.4 to work with. So uh, let's see, our answer is yes, a jump from A to B or C is less than the 5.4 EV of energy available. What do you think? Good enough? If I was a teacher, I'd accept it.